Hello, beautiful people. Hi, how's everyone doing? Oh, wow. Woo! Well, welcome to our panel discussion. Um, so today we're going to be talking about monetizing your passion and the business of beauty. And it is a TikTok panel. So give yourself a round of applause for being here today. We truly appreciate you all. This is such an amazing event. And we're just truly honored and privileged to just be surrounded by lots of beauty today. So we have our amazing panelists and we're gonna be taking you guys through their individual journeys. And we hope to gain some invaluable insights on building your community, you know, navigating the ebbs and flows of the business of beauty. And we hope for you all to feel empowered to just monetize your passions. How does that sound, good? Woo! Okay, well, I'm gonna introduce myself. Uh, my name is Joylene Kamara. I'm one of the community managers at TikTok, really passionate about representation. I also am into creative strategy, um, and I'm just so excited to be here. I feel like I've said that so many times, but it's like, wow, so much representation in the room. Um, and I, I want to introduce the panelists, but I kind of like to like leave the suspense a little bit. And I want to kind of like get to know the audience a little bit. How does that sound? Just want to know a little bit about who is in the room. So I'm just going to ask a question. You can put your hand up if it's a yes. Keep your hand down if it's a no. How does that sound? Good? Amazing. Okay, so firstly, put your hands up if you have a TikTok account. Okay. It looks quite healthy. Wow. Okay, keep your hands up if you actively use your TikTok account. Okay, 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 okay. We're going to change that. We want everyone's hands to be up by the end of this. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so how? put your hand up if you are a, a business owner or you have the desire to have a beauty brand. Okay, okay. All right. Awesome. Okay, put your hands up if you are a content creator. Okay, we've got some content creators in the room. Amazing. Okay, so put your hands up if you have heard of one of these things, either TikTok Shop, TikTok Live. Okay, I'm, I'm very, yeah, TTCM. Okay, okay, this is looking good. Amazing. Okay, we have a little bit of an idea of just where you all are at on the audience. So, awesome. Now, I want us to get to know our panelists. So please, introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Jordana. Hi everyone, I'm Jordana. I am the founder, owner of Jordana Tisha Cosmetics. We are a cosmetics company based in the UK. Amazing. Hi everyone. Hi everyone, my name is Aisha and I am a <laughs> <laughs> yes. and I have a beauty content creator. Um, I feel like I'm mainly known on TikTok for selling blush to people. <laughs> you might have bought a blush because you've seen my video. But um, yeah, that's me. Hi. Amazing. <laughs> I love this panel because we have a business owner. We also have a content creator. And I feel like it goes hand in hand. So this is going to be a really, really insightful chit chat. So I want to ask you guys some quick fire questions. Um, just based on what all the girls want to know. And then we're going to get into it. Okay, you ready? So I don't want you to think about it too much. Kind of going to put you on the spot. Um, I would suggest you guys, you know, get your notes out because I'm going to ask them about like their favorite products and things like that. So we, we want to get the tea on all of that. So firstly, Jordana, what are your three favorite beauty products at the moment? Um, I'm obsessed with House Labs Foundation. That's amazing. Um, I have to be honest, it's all my own products. Um, yes. <laughs> Plug yourself, yes. Um, okay, I'll give you two of my favorites is our blusher duos and then our set and brighten powder duos. Um, and house labs. Amazing, okay, cool. Aisha, what's one product you can't live without? Lip gloss. Mm, okay, that makes sense. Do you have a favorite lip gloss? Right now, it's the Rimmel London Glossy Gloss. Okay, Rimmel London Glossy Gloss. I hope you're taking it's really notes. Good. 
Awesome. So, Jordana, what's your favorite indie brand? You can't ask me that. It's going to be Jordana Tisha Cosmetics. Amazing. Yes, okay. And Aisha, okay, I've got a question for you now, yeah? So, what's your favorite product in your skincare routine? Tranosamic acid. Transamic acid. Yeah, it basically helps with hyperpigmentation. I specifically use one from Inky List, oh, if okay. you're listening. <laughs> it's okay. really good. Amazing. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, Jordana, the final question. If you could collaborate with any brand or content creator, other than Aisha, oh, we've already. <laughs> who would it be and or what would it be? That's a really hard question. I'd say, I was actually going to say Aisha because we, about a year ago, we did a bundle together and it did amazingly. It was the Black Girl Magic Bundle. Um, and I feel like it really put us on the map as Jordana Tisha for catering for black girls. Um, so I can't think of anyone else. It's really difficult to think of someone. but. I'd probably say, as a brand owner, my dreams to be in like Sephora or something like that. Fair enough, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, great. I feel like we've got some tips out of you. So I'm very, very pleased with that. I think that now we should kind of get into your journeys um, because, you know, in the room, I'm sure we all have different passions. I'm sure the room, just based on the hands that are lifted, we've got a lot of beauty enthusiasts. Um, and we just want to know a bit more about yourselves and how you got started. So I'll start with you, Jordana. Always me first. That's your fault for saying I had the middle seat. Um, so I started my brand about eight years ago now. Um, I was a makeup artist while I was at university. Ended up dropping out of university. We, we won't talk about that. Um, so I started as a makeup artist. Couldn't get some of the products that I loved in the UK. Was sat at a table with my grandpa. And he said, why don't we start a beauty brand together? And that's how it started, essentially. Wow. And look where you are now. That's lovely. It's a family business. Yes. yes. Wow. I didn't know that. So Aisha, tell us a bit about you and how you got started. So, oh, okay. So I initially was a skincare girl before I was a makeup girl. So I started making content for a brand that I actually used to own. Um, it was called Me Skincare. And I basically used to make content for my brand as I was the face of the brand because I was the only person making content. Um, and in doing that, I really found my passion for content creation. Um, and I think someone asked me like, oh, what's your lip combo on Instagram once? And I made a video and I hated it and I took it down. <laughs> and then I think a few months later, I, I'd like plucked up the courage to do like a makeup routine. Um, and then I shared that on Instagram. And then, yeah, the, sort of, the rest was history. I just consistently started making content and luckily found a job within the industry and yeah the rest is history wow and <laughs> how did you go about building your brand like what were the key elements that you feel contributed to your success um i definitely feel like being passionate already about what you're doing is so important like before i was in front of the camera I was so passionate about the beauty industry anyway. Like I liked skincare, I liked hair care, I liked makeup. It was something that I naturally was drawn to. Um, I think in terms of building my brand, I think it was just finding what worked for me and not trying to put myself into the box and rather being the, the box, if that makes sense. So obviously I started in skincare and that was my thing. And I still do skincare here and, here and there, but I think makeup was really what made me like solidify, like I'm, I love makeup now, so yeah. Wow, you've mentioned some things that we're actually going to touch about, you know, in terms of trends and things like that, which is, yeah, hold that thought. <laughs> okay. Yes, so Jordana, how did you go about building your brand? What do you feel were the key elements that contributed to your success? Um, I think a massive point for me is I've 
never had like investment or anything like that. I had a little loan at the beginning. So it was always myself for six years doing the business on my own, packing orders, um, running the social media and stuff. So a massive part of that was having myself as the face of a brand. Um, what I found is that people really invest in the person behind the brand. I think the whole world of beauty has changed where we're buying more from people especially via TikTok, instead of these massive corporations, people like to know who they're buying from, know that they're a good person, they have good values. So I think a massive contributor to the success has been just being open and honest on socials, showing the struggles of owning a business, showing the positives of having a business and taking people along on that journey with me. Wow, so what I'm really getting from this is just the, the focus really is on being authentic because I think that that was at the forefront of what you both did. So, you know, a lot of us wish we could do that. Um, but when you took that first step, did you have any doubts? What was the thought process that, you know, helped you to really take that leap? I'll throw that out. Yeah. Just repeat at the end bit. Yeah, what was the <laughs> thought process that helped you to take the leap? You know? There wasn't, with me, there was no thought process. I just did it. And I could care less what anyone that I knew thought about what I was doing. I think everyone always knew I loved beauty. Um, I was terribly, terribly shy, um, believe it or not. Like this, 10 years ago, would have been my worst nightmare. I suffer from anxiety. This is like hell to me, but it's not anymore. So I don't know. I just did not care what anyone else thought, put the content out there. And yeah, I, I don't know. I forgot the question again. There's so many eyes. <laughs> Do you know what? What I got from that is that you just had to be fearless. I'm glad you, you just, got something you know, from that. You didn't, have, you didn't think too much about it. You didn't really care what people thought. You were like, let's just get started. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people go into either being a content creator or starting a brand with a massive vision in front of them, a massive goal. I actually never did. I've let it go organically, which is probably why it's taken me eight years and... I don't know how many of you know the brand, hopefully you'll know it after today, but it's taken a long time and it's probably because I've not had that goal. So it's all been trial and error to get here, which has yeah. been quite nice. It's been organic. Wow. And what were some key, you know, trial and errors that happened that, you, you know, you will take with you everywhere you go now? We've brought out products that have failed. Um, solely focusing on one social media platform. So previously we were just Instagram based um, and then one day that all went down the drain. So that was a massive learning curve. Running out of money, running out of stock. Everything's been trial and error. I'm, I was like, I was 19 when I started the business. It was my first job. Wow. I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing, but it's, it's going okay. Yeah, you just <laughs> did it. Wow. And what about you, Aisha? You know, what were some key elements that you feel, you know, when it was time for you to take that step? You know, it all just came together. Um, because, you know, a lot of people want to get started. They want to be a content creator. They want to monetize their passion. Um, but they may be stuck in overthinking. You know, what, what helped you to take that leap? Don't get me wrong, I overthink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like every video I post, I'm definitely like, as soon as I post it, I'm sure we're all guilty of doing this. So like you're refreshing the page to see <laughs> the views and likes go up. I do that too. So um, I think the main thing, like uh, I'd say the same thing as Jordana, like you just kind of have to not care. Like mm. I definitely care, but I also don't care. I feel like sometimes it's post and go. Like you... It, I, I've always said this to people, is just to keep going. I think it's difficult to keep going because you want to see the numbers. It's like, let's not lie, numbers are so important. Yeah. But if you keep going, and, and I, I always use this example, if 30 people watch your video and the one person that you needed to see your video was one of those 30 people, 30 people doesn't seem like that less of a number as a million. Because if a million people see it and the right person didn't see it, What's the point in having a million views on a video? So I feel like that's something that's kept me going. And I think something that I found incredibly difficult was I tried to cater myself as a content creator to be for everyone. Mm. And 
what I've learned whilst being a content creator is not everyone is for my content. Like mm. I might make a hair tutorial and not everyone can do their hair the way I do my hair. Yeah. I might do, you know, the darker shade of bronzer. Not everyone can use the darker shade of bronzer. And I realize my audience are people who look like me, the people in this room. And I think once I realized that, I started to make my content for those people. And I feel like it's become so much easier for me to be a content creator because that's authentically me because I can't change that about myself. So, Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess this lends right in to what would you say to a content creator or even a, a business owner who sees TikTok and might be slightly intimidated, but, you know, to be able to still sell their product or you know share your passions but yet still make sure you're relatable to your audience or incorporating the trends that are currently happening because that's like a balance that needs to take place and you both do it really well um so what would you say would be you know the best way to approach that situation approach it the way you would approach it mm. i think it's so easy to see trends on tiktok and be like I have to do this because it's trending right now. Yeah. And you, you, actu you actually don't have to. I think mm. I've learned that. Like I say, myself as a content creator this time last year, thought she had to jump on every trend. And if I missed it, I'd get really upset about it. And I'd really dig into myself like, oh, I should have done strawberry girl makeup and I didn't do it. <laughs> and I'd get really upset about it. But yeah. I think, is strawberry girl makeup something I would do? Am mm. I just doing it because it's a trend? That Those are things that you have to... What works for you works for you and what doesn't work for you doesn't work for you. Not to say that I couldn't have done it. I could have done it maybe a little bit different. Maybe plum makeup because purple suits my skin tone better than <laughs> maybe a red. You know, things yeah. like that. I think it's just catering it to yourself. I think it's difficult sometimes. You see everybody else's content when you're scrolling and you want to be, you know, you want to be the next Monet McMichael and everything. <laughs> like everyone wants to be like Monet. Yeah. I want to be like Monet. But I think just be yourself. I think it's, I know it sounds so cliche. We probably sound like Be an old, yourself. Yeah, just be <laughs> yourself. I think you will, you will naturally have your tribe come and find you. Mm. I think that's something I feel like in, in the last maybe six months of this year, I've really felt that. Like my community on TikTok, they mean the world to me. Like oh. I, I feel like all of the opportunities that I've had so far this year wouldn't have been without them. Like wow. whether they, even a comment, like they'll be like, what blush are you using? That's content for me. Cause now I can make a content on that blush. You know, where are you going this weekend? I can then show them that. And like having like a real intrigue into what I get up to as a person is so incredible. So yeah, just be yourself. <laughs> yeah. I'd say create the trends yourself post what you want to post it's so oversaturated again with like strawberry makeup how many videos are people going to have to scroll through to find someone that looks like them doing strawberry makeup like it's crazy so do what suits you i've never been someone that does cut creases and all of that it's just not me i cannot physically do it so creating that trend yourself of what you're good at and then people will appreciate it more it's more authentic authentic is what it's all about wow yeah i think that that's going to be a key theme um, in this discussion today um, especially as a brand owner you know everyone wants to connect with their audience on a personal level the demand on brands has changed tremendously um, and how do you connect with your audience on a personal level because i see you've got an amazing community um, and that's something that everyone aspire, aspires to have. Um, and you mentioned there was lots of trial and errors. So when did that aha moment happen when it came to, you know, just connecting with your audience? So, as I said earlier, we did like the first six years solely on Instagram. We had a great following there, but I don't feel like it was ever a connection between the brand, myself, and the followers. With Instagram, it's just about a polished look, a post. There's no depth to the actual content. So moving over to TikTok, I think we've been on it for like two years, maybe on TikTok shop for 18 months, and just posting stuff where I look a mess and I'm talking real and stuff like that. That's what's really taken us to the next level the growth we've seen in the past 12 months has been incredible and it's all down to that relationship that we've built via TikTok. 
Wow. Okay, I see. I feel like sometimes that is a, you know, it takes a lot of experimentation to get to that point, um, especially being in the beauty industry. Everyone kind of wants to show up as their best selves. So, you know, taking that step to be more, you know, just vulnerable in your content, I think, yeah, that's a, a nugget for everyone to note. And what about you? Because you, you also mentioned that, you know, when you first was stepping into content creation, you were trying to appease everybody. So when did that switch happen for you? A year ago. A year ago. Yeah. So I think it was actually after the, so I'm not sure if you guys know, um, but Jordana. I didn't know this till last week. <laughs> essentially so I'm part of something called the TikTok Rising Stars program which is where you can sell on TikTok shop and you get support from people who work at TikTok um, and <laughs> and essentially um, the I, I personally feel like the reason why I got reached out to to join that program was because I had bought Jordana's Black Girl Magic Bundle okay. and I made a video about it and the video did really well and Jordana sold out. So it was a wow. really good process. Um, but Jordana was actually the first person who actually did a bundle with me on TikTok. So, and she didn't know this, which I'm so shocked about. Um, but yeah, she really helped me and, and boosted my confidence um, with that. And I think when it comes to like, sorry, what's the question again? I've gone on a tangent now. <laughs> so, you know, you mentioned how you, at first, when oh, you yes. stepped into content right. creation, so, wide audience. The bundle. Yes. So, yeah, so it was called the Black Girl Magic Bundle. And I realized from that video blowing up in the way it did, the people who were engaging with my content and then following me from that content, I think I realized I can't appease myself to the masses because not that the masses don't want me and I don't want to ever give that narrative that like the masses won't want you, but I think I knew who my people were and who were gonna buy from me or listen to my recommendation or anything like that. And I think that was the turning point when we had the Black Girl Magic Bundle. Mm. I think it was then I saw my engagement go up and I saw who those people were. And I think in my head, I think my best example of something that's happened recently is I looked at my Halloween content last year and my Halloween content this year. And last year, you can see, I'm just trying to do everything. <laughs> and this year I was like, I'm gonna pick six things that I want to do. So I spent months on end, like getting all the like bits and pieces, whether it was props or anything like that, piecing it together. I filmed it all in September. I was so proud of myself. I didn't have to film anything Halloween during Halloween. So I had a bit of a break, which is good. But I realized that by doing something that I wanted to do rather than to do something that was for everybody, I had an easier time. And the wow. I'm not going to lie and say, oh, yeah, the content's on like a million views. But I love that content. It's high quality content that I can look back on and be like, I had a great time making that look. It was good, you know? And sometimes I feel like, Again, the numbers, you might not have hundreds of thousands of views, but if you know you're putting out good content, it will find someone. And I think, um, you know, some, someone will see it and an incredible opportunity will find itself to you. And I use my, my job as an example. Like I was posting on Instagram before I started becoming a content creator full time. And in that, my Instagram became my portfolio. So when I signed up to my job, if you didn't know, I work at Rimmel London. Um, <laughs> and when they interviewed me, my Instagram ultimately became my portfolio. Wow. And if had I not posted and had I cared that nobody was watching, I would have had nothing to show for my editing skills, mm -hmm. my confidence in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been there. But because I continued to post, it was all there. All they needed to do was scroll through my Instagram and find it. And that was that one person that I needed to see it. Wow. And here I am working at Rimmel, full-time content creator. Wow. So yeah, it's great. I'm wow. very grateful. <laughs> it just goes to show that no part of your journey is wasted. Yeah. Even when you do get started on platform, even the trial and errors, because like you said, you developed editing skills and loads of transferable skills. Um, so it's, it's actually, it's nice to see that, you know, when you go through those things, it all pays off in the end. Um, and you're all in your passion right now, and you're on platform, 
and you've, you've stepped into monetizing as well. And that's a big space and area that people are like, oh, am I good enough? Is my content good enough? And so I just want to know a little bit more about, you know, when you started to monetize and any challenges you may have faced. Um, I think the first one, especially when I started Rising Stars, they kind of like give you like an array of different categories to like sell in. And I think in my head, I was like, I need to sell a heated blanket <laughs> to everyone, <laughs> you know? And I was like, I, I, but that doesn't feel like me. And I remember I had like a, a manager that I spoke to with and I basically said, I don't really want to sell stuff that isn't related to what I sell. And I think mm. sometimes we get caught up in the idea that we have to sell everything. Mm on TikTok and I think you, you don't really have to. If like, for example, there's a product that you use and I think it's difficult finding the balance between sounding salesy and making a recommendation. And I think I really struggled with that at first because I, <laughs> I think I remember someone making a comment um, under a video I did where I think I opened the packaging and I was like, <gasps> And someone was in the comments like, if I hear someone gasp in another <laughs> review video, and I was like, oh God, I need to stop doing that. But I, I guess it, in a way, I think it's also authentic because I'm very theatrical and enthusiastic as a person. So when I react to stuff, that is my genuine reaction. So I think, um, I feel mm, in terms of monetization, recommend products that you know you use yourself like never take yourself out of your comfort zone of products that you don't necessarily not use i think just again authentic yeah. <laughs> like if there's a, a product that you like and you would recommend it to people and it's on tiktok shop drop it in there people if people buy it they buy it and if they don't they don't i i go in with that thought process whenever i tag something on tiktok shop someone might buy it someone might not buy it but someone might buy it we'll and buy that's it. that's it yeah. Amazing. So to, what I'm getting from this is that, you know, just being authentic in all that you do will make it even enjoyable for yeah. you um, because you don't have to be anyone else but yourself. Yeah. Um, I think even like paid ads as well. Like yeah. I wouldn't promote a product that I'm being paid to promote if I don't like the product myself. Like mm. there's no point. I think I, when you're starting out, don't get me wrong, you want to promote everything because yeah. you're like, <laughs> I really want to get into this space and you obviously want to get some credentials and everything like that. But I think as I've grown, I've realized that if I recommend something and it's not actually great and I've said that it's great, the video that I posted is what someone's going to remember is that I said that it's good. We've all been there. We've all been caught. <laughs> We've all went and bought something. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I think, you know, your credibility as a, as a, a business or mm. as a personal brand is so important and make sure you keep your integrity through it all because it at the end of the day like i say if someone's watched that video and you promoted it they're always going to remember you're the person who promoted that product yeah. to them. <laughs> it's true and i guess jordana yeah. you know building a brand can be so challenging what were some of the the hurdles that you faced and how did you overcome them oh i don't even feel like we've overcome half of them <laughs> i think as someone that's mixed race and a makeup artist, I've found it very difficult to appease from the lightest of light skin tone to the deepest of deep. I've always tried to be super inclusive with the product ranges, but as a small brand, you don't have the budgets to bring out 50 foundation shades. Um, so that's been a massive, not a massive issue going forward, but like it's limited the amount of shades that we can bring out. So we have say five bronzer shades and then once I know that the product's going to do well then I can invest more into getting all the shades in between those shades um, but marketing our products is like with you your page is catered to black girls whereas we can't do that because we have to cater to everyone as a makeup brand um, and I feel like a lot of makeup brands cater to solely the light side of the spectrum. So I, that is the last thing I want to be as someone that's mixed. So just trying to find our people on TikTok and trying to get people to look at our page and make sure it's really inclusive and that people want to follow us, even if one video is for someone of a totally different skin tone, but you're still learning tips because I do a lot of tutorials and stuff. So yeah, that's always been something that we're trying to incorporate as we go. I want everyone to know us. Yeah, no, I love that. And I guess 
because I was thinking about this panel and in my mind I was like, okay, so this, this whole, the whole purpose of this event, you know, this is black women in luxury. And that's a space that, you know, I was just thinking about it. It's not somewhere that a lot of us feel safe in, a lot of us feel comfortable stepping into. And especially as a business owner, um, how did you, you know, determine your price point? How did you determine where you would fit in the beauty industry? Because a lot of people may want to start their, their brand, but how do you determine what your brand is worth? It's a difficult one. So we started with all our products being made in the UK, which is going to make everything more expensive to begin with. So my whole thing was I did not want to compromise on quality at all. If something has my name on it, the brand's my name. I'm not selling. Am I, I'm not swearing up here, am I? No. I'm, I'm not selling rubbish to people. So... <laughs> um, that's a massive factor. The quality has to be great. They have to be cruelty free. Made in the UK, we've got some things that are made in Italy now and a couple of accessories that are made in the Far East, but that really drove up the price. But I didn't want it to be ultra high end luxury where people can't afford it. It needs to be inclusive for everyone. That's my main thing. And a lot of our products are two in one products because I'm a makeup artist. I've always based the brand on techniques that I use as a makeup artist. And what I've found is that I layer a lot of products. So I'll go in with cream bronzer and then powder bronzer. It's going to make my makeup last a lot longer. Same with blusher, powder. I use two different powders to get different effects. So majority of our products have two products in one. Oh, I see. So the price point, we've always, we're buying them expensive. So I have to put it at price point where, one, it's affordable to us, where we're making money otherwise there'd be no point doing it but also so it's accessible to everyone which i think we've done really really well so our bronzers say are 30 pounds but you get two in one so you're paying 15 pounds for each it's just communicating that with people online and the amount of product that they actually get in it like you know how much you get so it's communicating it online it's actually very good value but because it's a unique concept that's been you have to really communicate it online. I see. Okay, no, that gives us great insight because I was wondering about that, so thank you. And even for you, Aisha, um, you know, collaborating with brands, how have you found the luxury space? Um, I don't know much. Yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't got there yet, obviously claiming it in the future. Yes. Um, but I guess in terms of, like, I guess price point as a content creator, I'll start yes. there. I think knowing your and i i've had questions i've had other you know content creators dm me and be like oh i'm starting out like a brand has reached out to me what did you put as your rate and i and i always say i can't tell you what your rate is i can't and i mean and i, I always say i mean it wholeheartedly i can't tell you what your content is worth because only you know that and i think it's very important important as a creator to use your analytics as your tool okay. my analytics i is my Bible as a creator. I think it's very important to look at your analytics in terms of who's following you, what are those people like looking at? I think how do those people engage with you? I always look at like my engagement rate and I base most of like my rates as a content creator on that as, as well, just because I feel like you could probably charge a little bit more because then you know if the brand is working with you if you know that people are guaranteed to buy that product because you've sold it, they're probably most likely going to be more willing to pay you more. So use all those different things. Or obviously use guidelines. I've, I've watched countless videos on TikTok about yeah. like what you should like sell yourself as as a content creator. But I think knowing your value is the most important. No one can tell you what you are worth. And I think once, you know, kind of like with you, Jordana, you know it's expensive for you to source your products and make them in the UK. Yeah. Well, I have to film the video, I have to edit the video. Mm. That's gonna take time. Mm. So add all those things together to make what your value is and then move forward with that. And then obviously as you grow, money increases. Yeah. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so know your worth. Okay, and you know, both of you are consistent and you've, you've made so much progress. And 
the big question I think for a lot of people when it gets into you know content creation and getting to the point where you can monetize, um, how do you both show up consistently and giving your audiences you know what they know you for, your content, your products? Um, how do you? How have you managed to consistently do that? Because that's an area that a lot of people struggle with because life be lifing. So how have you both managed to do that um, over the years? Oh, gosh. Yeah, we might get a little bit deep. <laughs> We've really connected over this. So I, I said earlier, I suffer from terrible anxiety. I'm awful. So if I am having a bad day, like I'll allow myself to have that bad day. Um, Batch filming content's great because if you feel rubbish one day, stay in bed. Um, so as I said earlier, I started the company with my grandpa. He was my business partner. Um, and during COVID, he got really poorly with cancer. And he, I've always said, because <laughs> I'm getting so deep. Um, so Love my it. grandpa was like a really big father figure to me because um, I didn't have my biological dad around. I always said, I don't know how I'd go on without my grandpa. And the fact that we'd gone into business together and he did all the financials, the proper business stuff, like that is not my forte. I like makeup, that's it. I'm social media, so I was always like, this is probably gonna end when he's not here. And when I found out that he was poorly and terminal, I was like, my, probably the last year of business. And the fact that I actually managed to keep it going after that, the past two years. It's been a struggle. It took me a whole year to get back to normal, but you have to force yourself to do it. It'd be so easy for me to give up, but one, knowing that you've got people that appreciate the content you're putting out, the products, and how unhappy would my life be if I just gave up so I think allowing yourself the space to have those days where you don't want to do it but then force yourself out of bed put your makeup on film that content it's just so important to allow yourself that space and I've always been so open online about like mental health and stuff like that I'll go on and be like I'm having the worst day <laughs> of my life um, and just vent to the camera it, it, it's like a therapist it's great but yeah Yes, I'll let you go. You, <laughs> so I, I think I, I'll say the same thing as you. I ju you just keep going. I think, again, it will start from your passion. If you're incredibly passionate about what you're doing, you, <laughs> I hate to say it like this, but you will find the strength. <laughs> you will find it. And I think, like, I can talk about a, a, a circumstance recently. I needed to get a piece of content done, and the deadline was coming up, and I'd had a really busy day with work. I did the piece of content wrong because I used the wrong product because there's two versions of it. So I had to refilm it and I was so tired. I had to cook and I had to clean. <laughs> and it was like 10, 11 o'clock and I was like, okay, I still have a full beat face on. <laughs> Let me just quickly film the content. And I didn't want to, mm. but I did. And I'm happy I did because I set the content in on time, but I got it done. But yes. like, it's just sometimes like you, you just, you have to find the strength to do it. It will be so difficult, but I think it's just, it, it's that burning fire and like I'm, I'm in a similar circumstances Jordana I lost my mum last year wow. and it was incredibly difficult because wow. showing up on social media is so difficult when up here isn't okay mm -hmm. and I think you kind of have to give yourself grace yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of the time if you're not ready to post don't do it I know I just said like <laughs> <laughs> Balance. But also, balance. yeah, the balance. Yeah, but also give yourself grace. You all have bad days. You all have amazing days. But give yourself that grace. And I think when you find the balance, bulk content creation will be your best oh. friend. Oh my goodness. You're doing a full face, do a separate bit for the eyes, <laughs> a separate bit for the lips. Oh, you're trying a new blush. That's three videos in one. Done. Wow. Edit them later. They're ready to go. But I'm telling you, just it's better than having to sit in front of the camera when you've been crying all day mm -hmm. like i'd rather have that content on the ready. side and ready to go rather than pretending i'm okay and i think again with the whole authenticity you can show up and be like guys i'm not great today i just wanted to share that with you mm -hmm. but i'm coming back or you could just not show up on that day and show up a little bit later when you're feeling a bit better i think 
mental health will always come first mm. um, and don't push yourself beyond your limit like just mm. give yourself grace but if you know you've got that that extra five minutes yeah. take the time <laughs> take the time sure yeah no thank you for sharing because I think when we are discussing the business of beauty it's important to cover all aspects especially when it's full time you know there's going to be on and off off days but it's your your bread and butter so how do you show up so thank you for sharing um and now we're going to actually open up the floor for some questions i think we may have time for like two questions three questions um so please um if you have any questions put your hands up and yeah Yes, okay, so just go to the front, um, the lady with the green jumper. Hi, thank you so much for coming today, you guys. It was really informative. Um, I wanted to ask kind of more about building an online portfolio. Um, and like, especially if you don't necessarily have like the best editing skills. And I think that like having like a page aesthetic is a really big thing nowadays. If that's maybe something that you struggle with a little bit, what kind of tips would you guys give for um, people building like their online portfolios if they want to start like a, like a MUA kind of business? Thank you. Is it specifically makeup artists? Specifically MUA content? TikTok or? Um, Instagram and TikTok. I've never worried too much about the feed looking aesthetic. Um, I think most people, they're scrolling. They're not going to feed and looking, oh, she does pink and then purple. You know, when people have it all color theme like that, I don't think it's that important anymore. Um, so I think just making sure your quality is as good as you can get it. Um, I use, I do a lot of tutorial videos. Um, I use my iPhone, two lights, and I edit it on Splice. It's very simple, but I found a great editing technique the past year that's made videos go viral, and that is it being very, very, very snappy. People don't want to be watching you say like, and I carve out the brow and I do this, just do it quick. So I do the brow, it takes 0.1 second, and it's just snappy and it keeps the user's attention because attention spans gone in this generation you have to keep them engaged so a 45 second tutorial full face I edit down like a 50 minute makeup into about 45 seconds but it'll be worth it in the end it takes time but it's worth it Amazing. I think also in terms of the aesthetics like I wouldn't care too much about it just make sure the photo that you've got, because I'm thinking about like the cover photo, make sure it's maybe the end result. So if someone's coming to the feed, don't let it be the first five seconds where, I don't know, the model is drinking a drink of water. <laughs> you want to see that end result. I think if people are going through your feed, they want to be able to see what the end result is first so they can click on it and then watch the full video. I so, don't do that. Yeah. I don't do that. Don't, don't I like... <laughs> um, it to look shocking or something on the feed. So like, <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, you know, they're like, oh God, what's that? And then they'll click on it. So like really heavy bake or something like, something to grab attention. It can either be a really pretty, pretty result or really horrific halfway through where you don't know where the makeup's going. Either way. To be fair, that does work really click well. Clickbait. Yeah. <laughs> you see, you just have to find what works for you. Yeah. Amazing. I hope that answered your question. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. I think we're actually good. I think we're good. We're even good for time. Amazing. So what I wanted to ask before we, we wrap it up is what would be your final piece of advice for people who are stepping into now beginning their journey and progressing to monetize their content? Yours. Starting yeah. a business, I'd say just go for it. I think a lot of people think that you need £20,000 to start a company. You don't. You can start small. Um, you don't have to have a full range. I started off with three shades of liquid lipstick. That's it. And then reinvesting that money 
that you make from sales back into the company. I think a lot of people go crazy in the first few years and think all the money coming into the bank from any sale is their money. It's not. It's the business's money. So reinvest. You don't need tons of money to start a makeup company. As long as you're making sure you've got good quality products and stuff like that, market yourself online. Anyone can do it. If I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> Thank you. Aisha. Clap, clap, <laughs> um, I think my advice would be to show up unapologetically. Um, find the niche that you're very interested in, whether that is beauty or anything else that you're interested in. Look at, look at what other people are doing to see what's happening now in terms of like what's in the trends and what people are posting about. Um, but then also just flip the narrative so it's more suited to yourself. Um, I think a lot of people are all, always worried about equipment and I was worried about equipment when I first started. I think just like Jordana says, use, do the best quality with what you've got. Um, I would say a really good skill to get as a creator is editing skills. I think those are like the basis of everything um, and a good lighting setup. I think anything that's well lit will look great. So even if it's just, you know, I don't know, you put a, a couple of pounds aside and you get yourself a really bright panel light. Once you have that one light, work with that. And obviously the bigger you grow, the more equipment you can invest in. And obviously you can make it better. You can get a better quality phone, et cetera, et cetera. But don't, don't stop because you don't have X, Y, and Z. I think a lot of us procrastinate and we're like, I don't have the iPhone 15, so I can't post this content. But honestly, you can post with whatever phone. I would recommend using the back camera. Um, it works really, really well. Um, and there, just, just post whatever it is you want. If, if you need to go on chat GPT and <laughs> type in 30 days of content that I can create to get yourself a start, do that. But just know that you're going to show up and, you know, it's nearly the new year. You've got loads of time to plan and 1st of Jan, you'll be there and you could be the next big thing for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Let's give a round of applause to our panelists. <laughs> oh, okay. Do we have another question? Okay. Yes, we do. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's go over there. Hi. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm sad. My name is Yasmin. Hi. <laughs> um, so I'm a TikTok content creator as well, and I'm really passionate about like you know, just content and beauty and hair and everything. But I wanted to ask you ladies, like what's the best way to, you know, boost your profile, or like, you know, increase in engagement and things like that? Question? Utilize every platform and repurpose your content onto different platforms. So what I mean when I say this, so I post frequently on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube shorts. And the last one, I feel like loads of people don't utilize. I don't. YouTube shorts, guys, I'm telling you now, it's the gem. Like, it's so good. Like, you can repurpose your stuff on there and, like, not have to worry about it that much. I feel like one of the tips that I always say is to maybe try to avoid talking videos. I know on TikTok, like, we all want to do, like, the get ready with me's and talking. But if you can do, like, B-roll of what you're saying in the video, you can then repurpose those B-roll videos on Instagram where maybe you're not that confident with posting a video where you're talking in it. You can just use a trending audio and you do it there. And then you can do the same thing for YouTube. I think getting as much exposure of your content on multiple different platforms is super important. I think utilize as much platforms as you can as possible. That's what I do. Like I don't have a million followers, but I'm happy with my 30K. I love them all. <laughs> can I add to that slightly? Um, one is what you said about the get ready with me and the talking ones. I feel like they're really good once you've got that loyal following. Like people don't care about people that they don't know. So really snappy, quick content showing your skills and your creativity to build that community and then they can get to know you with those longer form content because attention span again, really short. And then what was it? I was gonna say, oh, trial and error. Not every video is gonna go viral. Not every video is gonna get that many views. Still to this day, it's the same. We can post three videos in one day and literally they'll get a handful of views, but don't let it dishearten you and keep going with it and be persistent because it's not just about 
you. It's about who it gets pushed out to. It's nothing against you if it doesn't do well, so don't let it dishearten you. Thank you. I feel like that answered the question. And any other questions? Awesome. Yep. Hi, I just wanted to ask how influential TikTok has been in comparison to your other social media use, because it is like a really trending app right now. Well, my, my larger following is on my TikTok. I feel like you're able to reach people more easier than you can on, I know everyone's having a really hard time on Instagram. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I feel like TikTok, TikTok allows you, like I would, there's certain content that I would post on TikTok that I would never post on Instagram. Like you're, you're able to show up so freely. Like I can be halfway through doing my makeup, my hair's not even done. And I will literally like post the video halfway, be like, oh, I've just received a package and like post that video because that feels native to TikTok, as opposed to if I posted that on Instagram, people would be like, why is her hair not done? <laughs> like, it's very different. I don't know how to explain it. I think TikTok is definitely trending. I definitely feel like it's a platform that people prefer because they can just show up as themselves. I just, I, I don't know if there will be a platform that will be new that's like TikTok. I think TikTok is really one in a million. I just feel like no one really does it like TikTok. Like you can be dancing on TikTok one second, doing a trending audio the next day and then sharing about a breakup tomorrow. Like it's very, like you can do anything on that app. I think play with it, do anything that, that you see that entices you and just have fun. I feel like, tic, like the main basis of TikTok is just to have fun. Like I know we're here and we're talking about like monetizing it and everything <laughs> and the seriousness of it all, but like really just enjoy what you're doing, I think the monetization of it will come after. Yeah. Like it will always come if you consistently show up for sure. Yes. I think as a business owner, TikTok has changed the game. It's honestly changed my life. The, the growth we've seen over the past 12 months, like two years ago, I, like, I've not got accepted for a mortgage applying for houses yeah, because the business made a loss two years ago because we were solely selling on our website TikToks changed the scope of my whole life. It's changed the trajectory. I can see the business going so much further now that I've managed to get the hack of TikTok. It's honestly, for business owners, I think it's the way forward. Um, you can't focus solely on a website anymore. TikTok shop is the place to be. Yes, amazing. Oh, we have another question. Yes. So I have a question about setting up a TikTok shop, and this one's for you, Jordana. Okay. Um, how long was it before you started to see growth on the shop? Ooh, I'm looking at Farron in the front row. You know what? We saw sales in the first few months. They were slow, but it was fine. Um, we're about 18 months in, and I'd say from April this year is when it's blown up. So it's it's been a while, but it's so worth it. I think it's just the consistency of our videos. Um, more people hearing about the brand has really changed it, but you just have to be patient with it. It's not overnight success. I think a lot on social media, what you see is thinking it's going to be an overnight success. It's taken me eight years to get to this point. So just be patient with it. But yeah, 100% get on TikTok shop. It's amazing. I'm really amazing. Amazing, thank you. My TikTok's you. biggest fan. Sorry, yes. I just interrupted you. Sorry. It's all right, it's all right. I feel like, do you have any more to add to that or are you good? No, you unless good? you want me to carry on. No, I have a second question and this one's for you, Aisha. Um, so you were saying about sometimes you post things and they might not be as successful as you intend them to be. So I wanted to ask, do you curate your videos and your posts? So if you see that something hasn't done as well or hasn't um, gained as much engagement as you'd like, do you then go through and sort of remove them or maybe refilm or edit? Never delete your videos. <laughs> That's the biggest advice I can give you. If You know what? One thing that will shock you about TikTok, if you're a person who avidly deletes your videos, one thing I've learned is sometimes a video that maybe didn't do well in the first 24 hours, come back to that video in a week and it's done really, really well. I'm telling you, sometimes the algorithm doesn't quote unquote pick it up. It takes a bit of time. So I would always say don't delete a video that to you is deemed hasn't done well. Because sometimes it can be the videos that go 
boom really well and gets like 3,000 views in the first day and then it stops. <laughs> then you don't get any more views. I would rather get a, have a video that gradually grows in time and gradually reaches a wider audience than a video that reaches, what, 10,000 people in the first day and then that's it. I'd rather something that grows. In terms of the curation of my content, I definitely do sit and think what could I potentially like make content on. So like, I think the most easiest one is I've bought a new makeup product to so let me share my review on that product. And that's, that's an easy win. Also looking at trends, if there's a way you can twist it in a way and like make it yourself. Like an example, everyone was posting their Spotify wrapped. I did a makeup wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not like trending like that, but I thought, well, I don't have Spotify. I don't use Spotify, but I do use makeup. So I tried to make a trend myself and the video didn't do that well, but I know that I liked that piece of content. I put time and effort into it and yet yeah, didn't reach a lot of people. But again, sometimes you can get a little bit disheartened about reach with videos, but don't let it be your be all and end all. Cause I'm sure like it will hit the right person. Like I always come back to it. I know it sounds so cheesy, but the right person will see it. The right people will see it. Like I will never forget when I started working with the inky list and the video that they sent me as example was a video that had 300 views on TikTok and it was me using a cleansing balm. And I remember they basically emailed me and said, can you recreate this video but using our oat cleansing balm? And then they paid me for it. Now, if I had deleted that video thinking, oh, not that many people had seen it, inky list would have never picked it up and never would have paid me. So I definitely feel like that's an example of something that you could potentially do where the right person saw it. And, you know, I got to have a really good connection and I work with Inky List till this day and that was a year ago. So yeah, I'd, I'd definitely say, don't delete your videos for fun. Um, if something that you think or deem has done quite badly, again, if you use B-roll and maybe it was like a talking video, use that B-roll to a trending audio. And you never know if you, like, I always do this thing where I reply to a comment on that video on TikTok, it will always bring that person back to the original video. And in that way, they've watched that new video that you've watched, but then you've also taken them back to the original video that didn't do well. So then in initially you've made them watch that one, but then they've actually watched the first one that you posted and you'll see the views for that video go up if that video does well, because trending audios tend to do really well on TikTok. So reply to comments, that's really good in terms of engagement. Amazing, was that question answered? Yay, <laughs> awesome, okay. Any more questions, we're good? Awesome, awesome. awesome. One more question. Hi, yeah. um, okay. so I know you guys have really been talking about TikTok shop. Um, and I'm curious about getting into it. So what is one thing that you guys love about TikTok shop that you don't think other platforms offer? Instant ability for the person watching the video to click order, done. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to go out of the app. It's so easy and seamless that it makes the shopping process a lot quicker, easier, and it also makes the selling process for Sellers easier too, so it's just simplified, easy, streamlined. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. It's, it, it just makes things easier. I can recount the amount of times I've watched maybe like a YouTube video <laughs> and they're like, use my code, and I never <laughs> use the code, and I always feel bad because obviously you want to support your faves, but when it's TikTok shop, it's literally just a, a click and you've supported your fave instantly without even thinking about it. So, yeah, very yeah. streamlined. Yes, well, thank you guys so much. I feel like we got a wealth of knowledge and information today. And I hope you all feel empowered. If you're not active on TikTok, to get active. If you're a brand owner, to begin selling on TikTok shop, because we are looking forward to having you all there, okay? So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> give our panelists a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and we're out. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. If I can ask everyone to make their way out of the auditorium.